What we're going to be looking at here is a deferred tax asset with and without a valuation allowance account. Now we'd set up this valuation allowance account for this deferred tax asset when it's more likely than not or a greater than a 50% chance that you will not be able to realize some portion or all of this deferred tax asset. So what are we talking about with a deferred tax asset? This is where we're going to be looking at just two years here for example, year X1 here and year X2. And we're going to, the deferred tax asset's going to be based on a temporary difference here that's going to reverse itself in later years here. But we'll start out with this temporary difference of $375,000. Now everything is in thousands of dollars here for this example. And uh, for year X1 here, our temporary difference, we're going to, that's going to be included in our income here before, before, it's going to be included in our taxable income here for the year here. So what we have to do here is we're going to be actually paying, prepaying a tax on this temporary difference here. And it's going to be a future deductible amount in the future here. And that sets, is set up a deferred tax asset. Now a deferred tax asset, that's where you take your future deductible amounts times your future tax rate. So we'll start out here for year X1 here. Temporary difference, $375,000. Our tax rate, 40%. So our deferred tax asset is $150,000. Now, moving up to year X2. Now, our temporary difference actually increases here from 375 dollars to $500,000. Now, our deferred tax asset for year X2 is simply the $500,000 here in temporary difference times the 40% tax rate. That's going to give us a deferred tax asset of $200,000. Okay, so now this is the case here that we're going to be looking at here where we have increased our deferred tax asset from year X150,000 up to $200,000 here in year X2. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to calculate our taxable, determine our current tax payable or our current tax amount for, and we'll be looking just at year X2 here for example. So we're, uh, temporary difference here actually increases our income for the year here. I'm not sure what our income was here, but we have some, uh, whatever it was, we would be adding that temporary difference to it. Now our taxable income, that we have to know here, and I'm just uh, showing that here is $850,000 here for year X2. So our current tax or our tax payable would be the 40% tax rate times our $850,000 or $340,000. Okay, so now we can go down here and we can determine our tax expense here. And this is going to be based on the case here where we didn't, we're not going to set up a valuation allowance account here. We're going to realize our total deferred tax asset here based on uh, the fact that it's 50% chance that we're, we're not, we're going to realize uh, greater than a 50% chance that we're actually going to realize the total deferred tax asset. So what do you have to do here for a deferred tax asset? We have to start out with our beginning balance here of $150,000 that we calculated here. And we have to set up the account here such that we end up with the total for year X2 here of $200,000. So what uh, we have to do is we have to look at it th in this case here where we have our beginning balance at 150000 we have to move up to 200000 here for a total for year X2 here. So this is what you want to look at. You want to start out with your deferred tax asset at the end here at year X2 we need $200,000 worth. Now our deferred tax asset at the beginning of year X2, remember we calculated that to be 150000 So what we need is the net, in and we have a net increase here that we have to be looking at and that's simply the difference here of $50,000, $200,000 uh, versus 150000 So we have a net increase here of $50,000. And again, there's going to be no valuation allowance required here because it's more likely than not or a greater than 50% chance that it will realize this total deferred tax asset. Okay, so let's look at how we uh, how we calculate our tax expense now. So our tax payable, that's simply our current amount here, that uh, $340,000 worth, 40% 40 of the taxable income here of $850,000. So credit your tax payable here for $340,000. Now, now we can calculate our tax expense, knowing what our deferred tax asset is here and our tax payable. So really our tax expense becomes a plug or plug the balance. We start out with our tax payable here, credit amount here, 
That's a liability here on our balance sheet of 340000 And now we have to subtract out our debit. And now remember, a deferred tax asset here reduces our taxes. And there's a debit amount here in a deferred tax asset. And what we're going to be looking at is simply for this year X2 for our tax expense is going to be the incremental incre the net increase here of $50,000, simply the increase from $150,000 to $200,000. So this is what we're going to be using for a reduction of our tax expense here, the $50,000. So going over to our tax expense, we're going to debit that here for $290,000. That's for year X2, and that's on our income statement. And simply looking at it here, that would be the, as I said here, the plug, our tax payable, 340000 let a credit amount less our debit here for a deferred tax asset here of 50000 That's only that net increase here for the year here. The difference gives us a tax expense of $290,000. So you can see where this deferred tax asset here do, uh, reduced our tax expense from our what our current amount, 340000 to what we recognize on our income state statement for the period here, 290000 reduced by that net increase for the year here of uh, $50,000. Okay, so we've taken the care of the case here where we didn't have to set up any valuation allowance because we were able to recognize this, realize this total deferred tax asset. Okay, now let's go over and look at the other case here where we're going to set up the valuation allowance. And we're going to be working with the same numbers here. Uh, looking at them here, we're going to be having this deferred tax asset, 150000 200 for in year one, year X2 here, 200000 and our tax payable here, 340000 So going down to our accounts here, we're going to have the same deferred tax asset account. Tax payable is going to be the same here. But what is going to change here is our tax expense here. We're going to be looking at how that is affected here because we're going to have to set up a valuation allowance account. So let's go down and let's first look at why we would be set, and what we're going to be putting into this valuate deferred tax asset allowance or valuation allowance account here and we'll look at that in greater detail here but let's look at the case here the valuation allowance is required here because it was uh, it was more likely than not or greater than a 50 percent chance that it will not realize in this case it's thirty thousand dollars worth of the deferred tax asset then they're estimating that a greater than a 50 percent chance that they're not going to be able to realize 30 percent of that deferred tax asset that we have so let's go up and let's look at how we how we set up that account here so deferred tax asset allowance or valuation allowance account here is going to reduce our deferred tax asset it is a contra account here and the point is that this it reduces the deferred tax asset you can just look at your debits and credits here debit here uh, for deferred tax asset is a debit minus here uh, for the contra deferred tax allowance account and uh, the credit here is any increase in a deferred tax asset a credit plus here reduces the deferred tax asset it's a contra account here okay so what we were sitting with in our account here for a deferred tax asset for the total amount here of year x2 uh, was that two hundred thousand dollars now we set up uh, we're not going to be able to realize thirty thousand of that two hundred thousand dollars worth of deferred tax asset we credit here our deferred tax ass, our deferred tax allowance account here for thirty thousand dollars so what it, it's doing here this amount of deferred tax what it does is the amount of deferred tax asset loss of the benefit this is really showing the loss of the benefit here that we have at a deferred tax asset so our valuation allowance reduces a deferred tax asset carrying them carrying value here to the realized amount here so what we have here is a, let's our carrying value here is two hundred thousand we reduce it by the thirty thousand here uh, for our valuation allowance on the deferred tax asset so the difference gives us a hundred and seventy thousand dollars so you can see what's going on here we had to be because it was more likely than not or a fifty percent a greater than fifty percent chance that we would not be able to realize thirty thousand of the deferred tax asset so we set up this contra allowance account here okay so what would the uh, balancing how does this contra allowance account affect our tax expense okay so we have a credit here of thirty thousand here uh, which reduces our deferred tax asset from two hundred thousand to one hundred seventy thousand so what we need is a debiting amount going into our tax expense here I have 
show I've broken it out here we, we could include it in our uh, first account here for our tax expense but debit here for thirty thousand dollars here credit our deferred tax allowance account here uh, for thirty thousand so the debit goes into our tax expense account here for thirty thousand so essentially what we're doing here is we're increasing our tax expense here by thirty thousand dollars we had two hundred ninety thousand in here and we can look at that here again but because of the fact that we set up our allowance account here, we increased our tax expense up by 30000 up to $320,000 based on that valuation allowance. And just again here for the tax expense here, that was simply the net increase for the year here, debit amount of 50000 here which reduces the tax, current tax payable of 340000 down to $290,000 here. So we had, uh, that is where we're getting it. We had a debit here, 50000 for a deferred tax, then increase for the year here, and then that would reduce our tax payable here by uh, $50,000. And that uh, it, we recognize this tax expense on income statement 290,000. But because of the fact that we realized that we set up an, a realized amount here of a reduction in our deferred tax asset here by $30,000, we have to, that would increase our tax expense here by 30,000 from 290,000 up to 320,000. So whenever you set up these deferred tax asset allowance accounts here, remember there are contra account to your deferred tax asset here on your balance sheet. They reduce your deferred tax asset account. And then the, uh, the whatever you're crediting to your deferred tax asset allowance or increasing it by, that would also, the debit would go to your tax expense on your income statement here. Debit that or increase that by 30000 And in the same token, if you're uh, reducing your deferred tax asset allowance account here, you had some amount in and you're actually reducing it, a debit here, that would reduce it. Then you would, your credit would go to your tax expense or reducing your tax expense on your income statement. But just remember here, remember when you have to, you're not... Sure, if you're going to be able to have 50% or greater chance that you're not going to be able to uh, use some of the deferred tax asset or all of the deferred tax asset, then you have to set up your contra deferred tax asset allowance account or valuation account. Okay, so that'll take care of our example here for setting up a deferred tax asset account. Now remember, we looked at it in both terms here. If we didn't need the deferred tax, we, we were able to use the total amount here of our deferred tax asset, then we didn't have to set up any allowance account. But if we had a 50% or greater chance that we weren't going to be able to use some of the deferred tax asset here or all of it, then you'd have to set up your deferred tax asset contra account. All right, so that'll summarize our topic here on a deferred tax asset with and without a valuation account.